Do most of all, pray for the laws, pray for the building down off the hill. Just pray, Lord, this have his way. Uh, Jay, you care to pray for us? Dear God in heaven, first of all, I ask for your own sin, Lord. I pray for God. I thank you, Lord, for loving us, God. I thank you for saving us, dear God. I pray to God that you just be with this church, Lord God. Help us grow, Lord, Lord, to prosper, God. And I pray to God that you just be with this offer, Lord. Take it and bless it to your benefits, God. Just be with this number one that's gathered out here, Lord, for worship you tonight, God. I pray to God that you give us a blessing the night before, before we leave, God. And I pray to God that you the one that's not here, whether it be sick, Lord God, or whether, Lord God, that they're just not here because they don't want to be, Lord. I pray to God, whichever one it is, I pray to God that you just touch it more, deal with their hearts, God. I pray to God that you just uh, be with us, Lord God, in our day to day life, Lord, that we'll walk closer to you, Lord, we'll in everything that we do. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for us. Your holy, sweet, and precious name. Page 348. Spirit of God, if I do my part, you do your part, we can go home saying it has been a joy. Amen? 
Saint uh, Saint Mark chapter number two. Saint Mark chapter number two was over in verse chapter number ten this morning. Back up chapter number two this afternoon. Saint Mark chapter number two and verse number one. The Bible says this, and again he entered into Capernaum uh, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Uh, and straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not as much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he, where he was, and when they had broken it up, let that they let him let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, and he said unto the sick of palsy, Thy son, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, uh, they, they re so reasoned within themselves. Uh, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Uh, and whether it is easier to say to them, uh, say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, walk. But, it, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He hath the, hath the, the, the sick, he said to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go uh, into thine house. And immediately arose, and took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it. On this fashion, let us pray. Any Father, we come to you today, Lord, to some of us before we leave. God, thank you for another day and I'll give this opportunity, God, to be out into your house, into your presence with your people. And I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, you'll just give us the right words to say, not of us, but of you. Lord, I pray that somebody here tonight that stands in need. And God, just help them tonight, dear Lord. And Lord, I pray that we'll get the word off of our, off of our minds and get you on our hearts. Lord, that we'll follow you, worship you in spirit and in truth tonight. And I pray, dear God, for all those that's on the prayer list. I pray God will touch them. I pray, Lord, for every burden. I pray, Lord, for the, the Christmas play. God, you'll touch the people, each and every one participating in it. God, it'll bless the hearts of some that come out. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for the new building down the hill. God, you'll continue to help it to go according to your speed, your pace, Lord. Most of all, Lord, when that thing, when we get close and get that thing open, God, Lord, that we'll just see you fill it up mightily, God, not just with people, Lord, but most of all with thy spirit, and we can see souls get saved. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for each family here, God, there's such a blessing to us. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue to touch them. Help them, God, in training their children up the way they should go. And Lord, I pray, God, I know you're going to bless them for it. Now, God, take this word up into our minds and our hearts, and we give you all the glory. Not our will be done, but fine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here, I know some of us have probably heard this story before. I, this is a story of a man that had been sick of palsy. He'd been laying on a bed for some time. Amen. I, we don't know by we don't know by the scripture here just how long uh, that he had laid on that bed, but we do know that he had laid there for some time, and, and we do also know there that he was uh, stricken with palsy. And palsy, and there's many different types of palsy, and, but every type of palsy that there is paralyzes either some portion or portions of the body. Now, I was thinking about that as the Lord began to give us this message, and was thinking about these thoughts. Uh, a lot of times in our very own lives, uh, we don't even realize it, but we've got allowed things to be paralyzed us to be able to reach our full potential for God. Uh, here's why I can tell you this: I don't know if anybody I know anybody that has palsy uh, that would not uh, would, that would like to just keep what they've got. Amen. Uh, 
palsy, not only does it paralyze portion or portions of your life, but what it does is it does not allow you to live to the full potential of, of your life that you would if you did not have that paralyzing, amen, or that thing, that palsy in your life. Same way in our spiritual life, there's things that can hinder us that really keep us from reaching that potential of being exactly what God wants us to be if we need to, but we need to get those things out of it, amen. Listen, I want to tell you tonight, this Bible tells us that we come in one mind and one accord. We'll worship Him in spirit and truth. We'll be able to worship Him when we worship Him in spirit and truth. I want to get you something else tonight about this about the Scripture here. I, I mean, I, I, this is what the Lord said. The Bible told Him there. He came and He, he, he told the one that his, that his sins was forgiven to Him. And the Bible said... That the scribes that were there, they began to reason in their hearts. Uh, they began to reason in their mind and began to think upon these things. Let me tell you something real quick here. I, I want you to get a hold of this. Everybody listen up real good. Uh, because the Lord knows what you're thinking. Amen. That, let me just tell you something. Uh, he knows all those bad things that's going on in your mind. Uh, he knows all those... That, this bunch right here, man, I bet their minds is full with a bunch of men. See, man, look at them. I mean, you can see it all over their face right here. Amen? I, I want you to know mom and dad may not know what you're thinking. I, but God knows what you're thinking. Don't you ever think you're going to fool the Lord. Don't you ever think you're going to fool God. But I'm not, I mean, I give, I give them kids a little hard time right there. But I'll promise you, that them kids right there ain't the only one that have bad thoughts or bad things going through their minds. Mind. Amen. But here's what I'm going to tell you. We don't have to think about bad things or bad thoughts to have uh, to be out of the will of God. Amen. Uh, we allow things to come into our life uh, uh, that we just began to hinder us and keep us uh, uh, from being to reaching our full potential. Uh, and I was thinking about that today. You know, a lot of times we can allow sorrow or grief to come into our life. Uh, now look, Melissa and I have been talking quite a bit here lately and it seems like every time we turn around I'm getting another text that somebody has passed away. Amen. Or, or I'm having to send out a text for you to pray for our family who's lost someone. We know that, that there is some grieving and sorrow that goes along with that. I, I'm not here to tell you today that there's a way around it or, or, or any of that kind of stuff. And I can tell you this much, uh, there is a way to get through it. Uh, and I tell you, just like this boy right here, the uh, Bible told us that Jesus told him uh, to get up, uh, ride, or rise. That means get up, amen. That means get up out of your seat, get up out of where you are, uh, and to go back into thine house. So uh, I want you to tell you something today. What, a lot of us today, uh, we need to get up out of the things that we're in, amen. Uh, God does doesn't want us to be paralyzed. He does not want things in your life uh, to keep you hindered, amen, from being happy uh, or from serving Him. Uh, and I tell you one thing right now, sorrow can be one of those things. Uh, grief or regret, and I can tell you it can be one of those things the devil will keep using that, uh, and he'll keep going at you. Uh, some of us have had to go through it. Some of us have went through it for a long time. God doesn't want you to continually be sorrowful. Amen. He wants you to realize that hey, He's got you this far and He will get you on. It's time to get up and to move on. Amen. Quit wallowing in what we can't do and what we can't change. So many times in our lives we'll get hung up on the things that we cannot do anything about. Amen. That we cannot change what. Whatsoever. I'm here to tell you today, there's a lot of things that I cannot change, but there's nothing that he cannot change. Amen. He can change everything if you'll let him have it to change. And you know well. We can't go back in time or none of those things. But I can tell you this, we can be the best that God would have us for tomorrow. We can be the best that God would have us for right now. Amen. I'm telling you, the sorrow and the things that we, the Bible just tells us that we need to get up and we need to arrive. Amen. He could, you know this little boy right here, he could have thought about all the things that he missed out on. Don't you think that little boy laying on that bed, he thought about the things that he missed out on, uh, the things that he had to give up or the things that he couldn't do, uh, how he, when he was a kid and he couldn't run and play like the rest of the kids, uh, how when he was a young man he couldn't go out and earn a career like most men would, uh, how he was, when he was young, uh, 
And uh, uh, before he was in that, the while he was laying in that bed, uh, he could have been out and enjoying the things of life and, uh, and all that the world had to offer at the time. Uh, hey, but you know what? Uh, he can lay, I bet you he laid there and wallowed and sorrowed in it. Uh, but I can tell you one thing for certain. Uh, when he got healed, when Jesus come by his way, uh, all those things went out the window. You want to know how to get out of your sorrow? Uh, you want to know how to put that behind you? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, let God have a hold of it. Uh, let God deal with it. Uh, hey, and I'll tell you what. Uh, if you don't let God have it, uh, you won't have to worry about it. Amen. 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 I know. I know it'd be hard losing fam- losing loved ones, losing spouses. I hope I never have to go through that. But I can tell you this. God would not want you to spend the rest of your life. Listen to this. God would not want you to spend the rest of your life miserable to where you can't help nobody else. Amen. Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something real quick. The Bible tells us over in the book of 1 Corinthians. He tells us over there that you are, you'll be comforted with the comfort where which you were comforted. Yeah. You know what that means? That means that sorrow that you went through when Jesus came in to help you, uh, you can take what you learned from that uh, and you might be able to help somebody else. Amen? Uh, You might be able to help somebody else get through what they're going through. Uh, But you know what? If you lay there on the bed of palsy, uh, you lay there paralyzed, uh, you continue to stay in that state, uh, I'll promise you, you you ain't fit to help nobody else. Uh, But God saved us uh, and He he said, well, they took my spouse or they took my mom or they took my dad. uh, why in the world they leave me here? Well, listen, you still got a job for you to do. There's still something for you to do. And it ain't lay around. It's time to get up. And it's time to give it to Jesus. And go on. Or you might be a help to somebody else. Amen. 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 I, you say, well, you don't even. I do know. Amen. I know we go through some hard times. I know we need to get angry about it. Amen. I know people that's held grudges and being mad for stuff that, that they don't even know what they've been mad at for. Amen? Amen. Look, you can get mad and aggravated and upset with people. I mean, you get aggravated with them and don't even know what you're aggravated with them over. Huh? You know people that's been that way? Well, let me just tell you something. There's a lot of people in this world today that's mad at somebody else and they're living a miserable life and the person they're mad at is happy as can be. Hey man, I mean they're living their life just like nothing's ever happened. You know why? Because most likely nothing's ever happened. Now, the old devil will give you images, he'll give you thoughts, he'll give you things in your mind to be mad over. Listen, life is way too short to go through this world and way too short to live mad every day. I heard somebody, I don't know who it was this week. I was talking to somebody, uh, and they was uh, they had said that somebody told them uh, told them this. Listen, uh, uh, this is the way they live their life, and this is the way you ought to live yours. Amen. Uh, listen, do you uh, if you was to die right now uh, and go to heaven, you you do you want to die going to heaven being mad at somebody the way you are? Glory to God. Amen. Uh, do you listen? You got two. This is what the man says. That you got two choices. When you go to bed tonight, you get up in the morning. Lord allows us to sleep through the night, allows us to get up the next morning. You got two choices. You can get up and still be mad and angry at everybody in the world. Or you can get up and be happy with what God's given you and just go on and be happy and have a great day. Amen. I can tell you right now, life's too short to hold on to anger. It's too hard. It's too short to hold on to grudges. God wants us to go on and lay that thing down and get it settled. Amen. Oh devil, here's what the old devil does. There's a lot of times in our lives we'll think we'll put that thing behind us. And the first time you see that person, all them thoughts come back to your mind. First time their name's mentioned. Yeah. Look, you got a problem with them? Deal with it. De- deal with it. Amen. Look, go, the Bible says if you've got a fault with your brother, Amen. go to your brother. Amen. Deal with it. Don't take too much through social media. Amen. Don't sit at home and wallow in it and be mad over it where you ain't a benefit or help to nobody else. Trust me, it reflects on you and it rolls down to everybody else and to everybody else in the house feels it. Amen. We'll teach not only will we be mad at somebody, but we'll teach the rest of our family to be mad at somebody. Just because, look, 
I can tell you right now, well, there's people that, that don't like Johnny Stout because Johnny is a stout. I'll just be honest with you. Amen. I, I'll guarantee you that these people don't like Terry Steele because he's a steel. I'm sure of it. Amen. Uh, just because of who he might come from. Uh, just because, let me tell you right now, you might not like somebody because of the, that, like their last name. Uh, well, let me tell you right now, uh, that ain't no reason to be mad at nobody. Uh, and the Bible tells us not to let the, the, for us not to be angry with folks. Uh, for us to love others as we love ourselves. But uh, hey, if I care enough about my brother, uh, if I care enough about somebody out there uh, that I want to see them get saved, uh, I wouldn't be able to hold anger in my heart. Right. Amen. God said he said for us to love. He didn't give us a spirit of hate. He didn't give us a spirit of anger. I tell you, you might be here tonight. I don't know your hearts. I don't know your lives. But I do know what God gave me. Hey, if you've got things you've been holding on to, get them right there on that altar and get them cleared Amen. up. Amen. Yeah. you got a fault with your mother, go talk to them. Amen. You got something going on with your neighbor, go talk to them. Right. Amen. They might make you even mad. You say they might make me even mad. They might do it. But I'll tell you one thing. If you go get it off your mind and you go tell them what you think, and you go tell it in a godly fashion, in a godly manner, then I'm gonna tell you one thing, you sleep better tonight. And if they want to be mad, they can stay mad. Amen. There ain't no need for us to go through life being angry. I can tell you we need to make sure we do everything we can and project that it projects off you whether you want it to or not. Amen. I know people right now, I know people right now, I don't know if they've ever been happy a day in their life. You know, here's what gets We sing them, them, them kids sing a little song. If you're happy and you know it, then what's going to surely show? Your face will surely show. Yes. Man, I can look back. I look back at some of you right now. I don't even know if you're happy or not. <laughs> Boy, yeah. I tell you right now, look. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. <laughs> These people today they don't ever have a smile on their face. These people today they don't ever, I mean, you, I mean, you, to get a smile out of them, I don't know what you have to do to them. Hey man, look, don't be a miserable person. Life's too short to be happy. You want to know how you can really be happy? By doing what God had you to do. By allowing Jesus in our life and allowing Him to shine through us. And you'll never be happy holding on to a grudge. Amen. The uh, Bible says you can't forgive your brother whom you have seen. Uh, how shall God for why should God forgive you whom you have not seen? You say you love him, uh, you can't you but you can't even forgive him. Uh, you say you love hate uh, you, you hate your brother, but you love God. Uh, they just don't go together, amen. Uh, because the Bible tells us in the book of John that he is what? God God is love. Amen. There ain't no a little bit of love, ain't no dab of love, but he is love. Amen. And if he lives inside of us, the Spirit of God lives inside of us, we will have a spirit of not anger, not hatred, not sorrow, but we'll have a, a spirit of love. We'll have to because he lives inside of us. He said it's time to get up. Time to get out of that bed. Time to quit wallowing in that thing. Look, you know what the old devil likes to do to us? He likes to get us frustrated over everything, don't he? Mm -hmm. You know what? The littlest of things. I used to work as an old boy. I mean, the littlest of things. I mean, he'd be so mad. He'd be throwing stuff. He'd start out with junk. Then it'd be Japanese junk. Then it'd be Japanese four junk. Then he'd be cussing and throwing, and throwing things. Hey man, look, and I don't think I don't think that the Japanese or the Ford Company had anything to do with what he's mad over. Hey man, I really don't. I can tell you what you get mad over when you allow those things to come in your life and you're not where you were to be with God, uh, then things will frustrate you. Now don't get me wrong, there's people that'll frustrate you. If you don't believe me, talk to Amy at the church. I mean, she's been married to one, I mean, it'll frustrate you forever. Amen. Uh, look, but I can tell you for certain with this, uh, there's things the old devil to ever, he, he knows your buttons to push. Amen. He knows the buttons to push. Amen. Uh, he'll know right where to push you at. Uh, he'll know when to push you uh, He'll know how far to push you. Uh, he'll know how long to push you. Uh, and those things will get you frustrated and off you. But God doesn't want us to be frustrated. Amen. Uh, God doesn't want us to be in that state. Uh, he wants us, if we're frustrated, we can't be happy, right? Blessed is he whose God is Lord. The Bible tells us happy is he whose God is Lord of Lords. You know what? 
If you're God's not, if you got if you've got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then you can be happy in knowing that that's who you serve. But frustrations come in and the little things begin to bother you. You know why we get so frustrated over some of the smallest things? It's because we allow that thing to be a major thing. A lot of the things that frustrates us and aggravates us is done is immaterial. It is immaterial for anything. Amen. Uh, we have this conversation uh, just the other day, and I know Melissa's going through a hard time with her work. We're switching over and going through a new system. It's frustrating learning something new. It's frustrating having to deal with things that you have that's out of your control. With people being mad over things that's out of their out of their, their control. But do you know what? We can live. We can't continue to live our lives frustrated. I told her the same thing. My boss told me when I got frustrated when I first came over here. I asked her. This my boss asked me this. Do you think they're going to ask you how many pumps you sold when you get to heaven? Do you think when you get over there, he's going to ask you how many electrical jobs you did? I asked her. I said, Do you think they're going to ask you how many transactions you've done today? Do, do you think when you get to heaven, he's going to say, Man, let me tell, how many how many work orders you get through today? How many floors you pulled today? You retired. You know. <laughs> Look here, he's not going to ask us any of those things. He's not going to ask us any of those things. Those things are, look, we're blessed to have a job. We're blessed that we have a way of providing income. But I'll tell you what, God don't want you to be miserable where you are. He don't want you to be miserable in the state that you're in. He don't want us to be frustrated all the time. I'll tell you what we need to do. We just need to give it up to God and let God have it. And we need to walk God's way. I'll tell you something else. He don't want you to be depressed either. A lot of people, we work, we live in a world today that's full of depression. Amen. I mean, people have bad, uh, bad moods and uh, all these things. The, state, the, the word depression means this. It means a low state of feeling or mood. Man, half of you look depressed tonight. Amen? But you know what? You don't have to live in a depressed state. You can get out of that thing by just turning it over to the Lord. Right, man. So that's easy to say. You know what? It is easy to say. You know how I, why I say it so easily? Because I know it works. Because I know that it'll absolutely work. It worked for me. It'll work for you. Now look, it may not always happen in my time frame. It may not always happen exactly when I want it to happen. But I want to take a look at this boy tonight. I want to take a, st a look at the state that he was in. Look, there's some things. We give you some things and places where people are. Not only we feel with depression, but we feel with doubt and uh, uh, sin in our people's lives. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's a world. We live in a world that's absolutely full of sin. You might be here tonight, and you may have things that are sinful in your life. I don't know your life. The only person I know without a shadow of a doubt tonight is Terry C. And I know how bad he is. Hey man, look, you may be, we may be somebody here tonight that has, look, if you're here tonight, you have sin in your life. Things that you do, you say, well, I try. I try. Well, let me just tell you something. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried giving it to him? You say, well, I've tried to give it to him. No, you didn't give it to him. Because the Bible tells us if you give it to him, he's willing to take it. He's going to deal with it. Our problem is we come up here, we lay it down on the altar, and then when we get up and go back to the house, we'll leave it. You say, well, no, I left it there. Well, okay. You say, well, I left it there at the altar. Well, let me ask you something. If you left it there at the altar at church, then why this week did you go back out there and do the same thing? Why did you go back to the same sin? You come back down here to the altar and you took it with you. Amen. Now, you say, well, I didn't come back down here to church. You don't have to come back down here to church to take it with you. I don't think you ever really turned loose up to start with. Now, hey, when we have sin, when we have sin in our life, you know what God wants us to do? Now, he wants us to get up off that bed of sin and live for Him. Arise and walk. Amen. And walk and follow Him. Now, too many times we allow sin to come into our life and we just keep on and on and on. I seen the other night. Toss, you, you ever let it be in toss and turn, toss and turn, toss and turn? I do it all we do it all the time anymore. Just toss and turn. And then you think, man, I should have just got up. You ever feel that way? Yeah. Some of you have been tossing and turning in the bed of palsy for a long time. You might as well get up, amen? You might as well get out of that bed and get down to a place where you can find some help. Now we'll take a real close look at the, 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 this young man and we'll get out of here. I was thinking there about this young man and the Bible said there, 
And that he came down there uh, that, he, that, he, that he had been sick of the palsy. I'm going to tell you something. You're here tonight for a reason. You're not here by chance. You're not here by accident. God didn't give me this message for no reason at all. He didn't give, he didn't give me this message just for me to get up here and to say something, to feel a little bit of time, and then for you to go home. I, I want to tell you something. There was a reason. That, that boy did not get down to where Jesus was for no reason at all. Let's back up just a minute. The Bible said when he came into Capernaum, he preached the word. You want to know what's going to fix you? The Word. You want to know what's going to happen and how others in this world out here can get out of the bed that they're in and out of the sin that they're in, out of the depression they're in, out of the sorrow they're in, out of all the out of anger that they're in, the hatred they have in their heart. It's going to be caused. But you know why that room was filled? You know why that house or wherever he, the building that he was in, do you know why that building was filled? The Bible said it was noise that, that Jesus was here. It was noise that Jesus was there. Hey, if you want to have, be able to help somebody, if you want to see somebody, you know somebody that might be in one of these states, you know somebody that's been laying and tossing and turning on the bed of sin, been tossing and turning on the bed of doubt or depression or frustration, all these things we talked about tonight. You may know somebody that's in there, but you're leaving them laying in the bed because you're not noising about somebody that can help them. Amen. Tell somebody. The Bible said they were noised. But you know what the Bible tells us there? Somebody was concerned about this boy. There was at least four of them that had been concerned about his, his well-being. Do you know tonight somebody's concerned about us? Somebody was concerned about us is the only reason we're here tonight. You say, well, I'm here because I drove myself here. If you're here tonight, you may have drove yourself here tonight. But you could have drove yourself somewhere else, but yet you came here. You came here tonight because God wanted you to hear something. Now, God wanted you to realize something. Now, you're here tonight, but you said, well, I got here tonight because of my mom or my dad brought me. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Now, they brought you tonight because God instructed them to bring you to the house of God. Now, you might be here tonight, and you might be living in sin. Now, you might be here tonight, and you might be living in a world of depression or frustration now, or anger or all these other things. Now, that boy's right there. Has, that boy right there has somebody that cared about him. Now, not only did they care about him. Some of us tonight, we care enough about somebody to put them on a prayer list. <coughs> Just because you put somebody on a prayer list don't mean that's where you stop. Amen? Amen. They could have they could have sent out a prayer request for that old boy laying on the bed of Paul. Yeah. But you know what they did? They picked him up and took him down to the house of God. You know what happened when they got down to the house of God? They couldn't get in. They didn't get in their car and go back to the house and watch it on Facebook. You know what they did? They went up on the roof. They began to take the roof up. Now all they did they take the roof up and say, Lord, look up here. That's not what they did. The Bible said they let him down. They put him down there right where Jesus is. They went as far as they could go. They went the extra mile. Somebody went the extra mile to get you here. Somebody might have just prayed hard enough for you to get out of the bed and come down to the house of God tonight that you might get some help with whatever you're going through. And I'm going to tell you right now, now is your time to get it done. Is every head bowed, every eye closed, every piece of prayer, every heart searching? You've got plenty of time. You've got plenty of space. Right here on this altar. You've been wallowing in it. You might be wallowing in decisions, sorrow, whatever. I'm here tonight to tell you you can get it fixed. You can get it cured. You can get it helped right now. All you gotta do is give it to him. Maybe you're here tonight, maybe you've never been saved. You've never turned your life over to God. Would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you here tonight and say, Preacher, I'm not really sure. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Would you pray for me? Slip it up, put it right back down and say, Pray for me. Maybe you here tonight and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I should be with God. Amen. Somebody else tonight, amen. Somebody else tonight, amen. God sees all those hands. Maybe you here tonight and say, Preacher, I've got a burden on my heart. You can help me pray. Amen. 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 Got these hands going up all over the house. Let me tell you something tonight. Maybe you're here. Maybe you raised your hand. Maybe you did. 
This altar is open for anyone for any reason. If you want to get serious and come down this altar and give it to God. Right here is where you can find some help. You can come up here and lay that bed down. And you can get up out of that bed and you can go out there and live for God. Live for Him. Closer than you ever lived for Him before. Hey, because the life that you're living out there might be the life that somebody needs to see. Not half-hearted. Not just part of it. I mean, sold out. Sold out. Bought it. Because he purchased it. Anybody else want to come tonight? We're getting ready to go to the Lord's prayer. Altar's open for anyone for any reason. We just want to come. Would you come? She'll finish right here. Anybody else? Jason, you pray for us. God, all you God, all you do. I pray to God that for the Lord, that God is here tonight. God either made their way to the altar, Lord. I pray to God for the ones that didn't make their way to the altar tonight. God, that was supposed to be here I pray to God that you just touch their hearts. God, give them up on need. God, help them, Lord. God, like I know that you can, Lord. Lord, I and thank you, God, for helping me, God, on a day to day basis. Lord, your word. And I pray to God that you just be a piece of the Lord, Lord God, that's, uh, that's out tonight. Lord, whatever Lord, their needs may be, I pray to God that you just be with, be with them, God. Lord, help us, Lord God, to walk closer to you, God. Yes, Lord, you I pray to God that you just be with this, this, everything that's going on, Lord, with the Christmas play coming up, God. Just be with the new church, Lord God, and it's being built. I pray to God that you just touch where you see fit, God. Yes, Lord. Thanks for loving us. Thanks for saving us, God. Your holy, sweet, and precious name. Amen. 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 We sure do appreciate you tonight. We thank God for you. We hope and pray that the, you did what the Lord would have you to do. I get a blessing. I get a blessing every time. I, I've left this up here in the altar, so, or in the pulpit sometimes. I don't know if y'all remember that or not. If you don't, I might have to preach it again. But I get a blessing every time I see it stuck in there. Sometimes it gets pushed out to the front right there. I think the Lord just needs to remind me that the best is yet to come. The yeah. best is yet to come. Anybody not? Have you got a word or a testimony on your heart? I'm thinking tonight for His love. Uh, Amen. And also His Word. Amen. We can study His Word. And it, it always uplifts you. I mean, the Word you can Enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't it good to know that the same gospel that we preach today is the gospel that Jesus preached yeah. for them to get saved? Yes. Hey, man, the same gospel. Yeah. Anything, anybody else tonight? Something on your heart? Appreciate you, brother. Anybody else? Hearts and minds clear. Be much in prayer one for another. Pray for services this coming midweek that God's will be done. Uh, also, I'll uh, be praying about the work that goes on down here at the building. We're going to need to move stuff. I'm going to start moving the dirt, trying to do some this week. Uh, Brother Steve Arnold was uh, willing. To, he brought us a skid steer down here for us to use. Uh, we've got the tractor down there. I don't even know if the tractor will start my, my keys up here. So we need to check that battery. Anybody that wants to work down there and move a little dirt, then let me know. We're going to take the dirt from around where we dug the footers out, put push off toward the front. And they got to spray a little gravel so the crane can get up there closer to the building when they come to set them. But I'm going to try to work up there probably Tuesday, maybe a little bit through Wednesday through the day if I can. Those are supposed to be good days. I know a lot of you, we've all got jobs to do. I'll be in Knoxville and stuff tomorrow. But Lord willing, give me a little time to get up there. If anybody else wants to work a little bit, let us know. We'd be glad to have some help. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, uh, the trestles will start in a couple weeks. Uh, Mark said he'd talk with Jay.